Nerves are going to be there. I'm not saying you're not going to be nervous. But the stakes in the scene take the nerves out because if you're nervous, the character's nervous. If you need something in the scene, the character needs something in the scene, and then it comes alive. Ken Lerner. Ken is an accomplished actor, brilliant acting teacher. He has been in so many projects. You are going to know his face right away. Where did you grow up at? In Brooklyn. Okay. In Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Lots of Italians, lots of Jews. So what, um, growing up in Brooklyn, what got you interested in acting? My brother. My brother was an actor in high school and uh, then went on a Fulbright scholarship to England. And he was always doing it. And I said, well, if he's doing it, I can do it. And so I started studying. And I studied with Stella Adler in New York while she was alive. Would have been yes, tough I studied to study with Stella when she, she was alive, right. too. Yes. Exactly. And then uh, was working in New York off-Broadway and uh, off-off-Broadway and dinner theater and stuff. And then I came out here and started working. What made you decide to leave New York since you were already working there and venture out to Hollywood? It's called money. <laughs> Because <laughs> you could do television and film uh, in L.A., and in New York it was really tough to break through, so I was doing free theater and okay. you know, stuff like that. You were so a then poor I came actor. Out. Exactly. Okay. I came out and immediately started working on the biggest show on television, Happy Days. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, then once you got out here, you started working right away. Right away. And after that, you came out here. Did you start taking acting classes? Uh, when I first came out, I started, uh, I was working, and then I heard about this fabulous teacher. Um, well, actually, there were a few, so I was studying with Peggy Fury. Yes. Who was a wonderful, wonderful and teacher. And how was that experience? Well, it was interesting, because Peggy has narcolepsy. So Peggy would be watching a scene, and they had a designated nudger. Who would because occasionally she'd be watching and then but she was sharp and right there and she was fabulous called the loft theater really good people and um studied with her for a while i mean she was great where did you go from there to our wonderful teacher who's to, that that's roy london and roy was just the best and he was um inspirational and just the kind of person that really brought out the best in, in everyone and his technique, positive choices and all of that. The wonderful thing was I was working a lot in television and Roy kind of noticed and said, you know, a lot of my students are studying with me but they're not working so you must have some tips in terms of auditioning. So he said, why don't you teach for me? And it was a blessing and a curse. The blessing was I got to make money teaching the curse was I couldn't be in the class anymore because all my students were in the same class with me and that wouldn't have worked because it was weird. And so I started teaching for Roy. And it was great. What what were a couple of, of tips that you got from him as an actor that you still use today as a teacher? Be myself. Just bring who I am to everything that I do and bring the best me. And then also making positive choices using substitutions, figuring out the text analysis. Roy was a playwright, so he was incredible figuring out uh, the material. And then any time I was on television, Roy would call afterwards and give me a critique. And, you know, I remember distinctly when I did, I did one show, I can't remember what it was, but he called me and said, that's what you play. Do that. You're every man. And you're going to have an incredible career in your 40s. And he was totally right. In my 40s, I never stopped working. He was so insightful. And because he was a playwright, the text analysis was so important, you know? So for someone who's listening who doesn't, who would like to be an actor and knows nothing about what we just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, what is text analysis? Well, the writer writes a script, and then the actor gets the script, and then the actor has to figure out what the heck the writer wrote. And then we have to break it down into beats and we have to figure out what we want. And it's a problem that actors have because actors um, want to act. They want to be emotional. They want to do all of this stuff. But sometimes uh, they're not servicing the material. And Roy was big time into servicing the material, figuring out what the material was about, putting yourself into it, and then bringing the best choices, hot choices, 
from yourself, from your personal life, into the material. So that's text analysis going to follow actors forever. And you get better and better and better the more you do it, the more you practice. So what's a hot choice? Like when you say hot choices. Well, if I'm supposed to um, find somebody mm -hmm. that I hate in a scene, so I find somebody in my life that has caused me problems, they could, it could be from 10 years ago. Could be, I used to use, for example, I used to use an actor who uh, upstaged me in a movie, who came on to my girlfriend at the time, and was just a miserable human being. I used to use him all the time. It was great using him, because I hated him. It was right there. <laughs> and then he died a horrible death. So in death, he still made problems for me. But that's a hot choice, finding somebody yes. that you can use. And it might be somebody like right now in your life or something that happened right now in your life that you can bring into a scene and all of a sudden you have a choice that makes you come alive and you don't have to act. It's coming from right with you. You, know? you also mentioned beats. Yeah. What is that? Um, what are beats? You're playing a moment. The moment is very clear about what you want and then the moment changes and you have to try to find something else. So what I do and what a lot of actors do is where the moment stops, you draw whatever this is, I'm not... A line, yes, yeah, or a little whatever slash. Whatever that thing is, slash, slash. Yeah. right. And then the new moment happens and that's another beat. So you have a beat and then you have another beat and you try to, then one beat follows the other, or if it doesn't, then you have a pause or a transition to try to figure out what you want. And it's all kind of in the writing. The writers don't know how the actors are going to take charge of it. That's our job. But the writers are clear about where it's going. We have to figure out how to make that happen Yes. with beats. And so um. you break it down. That's the smallest amount. So you figure out what's going on in this section like a, maybe a sentence or a two sentences, and then it might change, so that's another beat. Excellent, I couldn't have done it better. <laughs> I've had the pleasure not only of being your classmate, <clears throat> but also being your actor, because you directed me, at, at, you probably forgot. I did. Many, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it probably was the bane of your existence. <laughs> um, but you... Um, what was it? Uh, My Cup Runneth Over. Oh, okay. Yes, you, I remember you, that. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, okay. we created so much hell for you, but uh, um, <laughs> you directed me, and then um, and did I then do a good job? you did a phenomenal oh, job. Good. Good yeah, job. you didn't you didn't quit. Good. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed. Yeah. But but you did a, you you were amazing, um, and then when you started teaching, uh, a few years later. Uh, when Roy died, I started taking class with you. Mm -hmm. I took class with you at, at, in scene study, and mm -hmm. I took class with you in um, cold reading. This was after Ivana? Uh, um, Ivana Chubbuck? It was actually before Ivana. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because right. uh, yeah. then then that whole thing happened. And yeah, no. You know. you, when um, you started, you were teaching, and I... I so you were one of my you. students at that time. I was your, right. Yeah, I was, I was your person. Right. Um, and then, um, so what, what has always impressed me, first of all, is that you were a working actor. And then you started to teach. And you taught from a very generous place. Mm, thank you. You know, uh, uh, because I've studied with a lot of teachers uh, before Roy, Roy was nine years, and then after Roy, I continued to study at different places. But what has always impressed me most about you as a, a teacher is that not only do you give the information and you really help the actor from whatever level they, they're coming mm -hmm. into your class, if they're beginning, if they're intermediate, if they're, you know, old-time seasoned actors that you you really take that part of Roy that Roy used to do and and pull out the best of that person mm -hmm. and not a lot of acting teachers necessarily do that mm -hmm. they're they can be cookie cutters you know yeah. do it this way uh, they want that scene done the same way yeah every no. time mm -hmm. and and what Roy was brilliant at and what you're brilliant at is looking at the actor and going okay this is what you do mm -hmm. this is what you do and so let's work with you um 
to get you to be the best you, which right. which is something you had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. But to be the best you, what um, and so in the scene studies class, um, what I loved is how you nurture the the actors through the character process. Yeah, I think it's real important to support actors. There are teachers that you know bludgeon people and, and, and insist that they do it a certain way. My, my attitude is that, you know, try this, try this, come along and then nudge and give them a couple of suggestions about how to... The best directors I've worked with in TV and film are the ones that can give you one word that will make you understand, oh, of course. Guess what? I've got this fabulous little bundle just for you because you are fabulous actor. I got it for you. So what do I got for you? Let me tell you what I got for you. I got the PR cheat sheet, which every actor needs. You need to know how to do your own PR until you get that job where you can pay for a PR person. Then I have the 12 step audition. That's another cheat sheet. You know, sometimes you get freaked out at auditions and you don't know what to do. Well, my 12 step audition cheat sheet will help you and guarantee that you will slam your audition every time. And the third thing I got for you is the casting sites. I have a list of casting sites so you can go and just submit yourself for that next big part. How does that sound? It sounds good, doesn't it? And I, I try to support people's choices and then deepen it so that when they're doing a scene and uh, in my class what we always did was we did the scene and then I would give a critique and then a week later you would come back and do the scene again and hopefully the notes worked and you took it on your own and now expanded it and um, as you said a lot of people are on different levels so you really as an acting teacher you really got to figure out what's going to help this person and not overwhelm them and turn them off. So it's important to know people's personalities and to know what, where they're at in, this, in the process. And I love working with actors who get better and better and better and then you can give them harder critiques and, and really move them along. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. What, what I love about your class, and, and for me, your co-reading classes w were th what I did when the season was gearing up. Right. Because you, <clears throat> you got me right in that place, mm -hmm. so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, rusty or whatever. I was able to go into those auditions and give them everything yeah, and leave nothing on the table. Totally important for actors you know because you get an audition once every two weeks three weeks four weeks so if you're in an acting class an audition class and you haven't you know you have an audition once a week that muscle is exercised so that you're doing it then when you have an audition it's not like oh my god i have an audition oh it's just like ken's class where i just did an audition now i have to do it here so i try to make a professional audition in a class exactly like an audition out in the big world so in the big world, they need you to nail it. You need to get callbacks. My purpose in an audition class is to get people first time to nail it because a lot of the times you only have that one time. In an acting class, you get to work on it a little bit in terms of audition class. But the purpose is to get callbacks first time. And then you gotta, you know, you got to come in really prepared. Actors need to do the work. And that's off book. Minimum you got to be off book. And luckily in the United States, because I teach a lot of foreign students now also, um, in the United States we have the paper in our hand. So if we have the sides in our hand, turn the pages, you can glance down, it's not a problem. But you got to be off book and it's got to flow. What is doing your work in the audition? Well, like or, I said... Or setting yourself up. you you right. gotta you got to know the material. Know the material, figure out the text analysis, keep working on choices so that you're making the choices that really bring you alive and making sure you're bringing yourself to the audition. You're sitting out there with 10 cookie cutter people in your category looking just like you. Not exactly just like you, nobody looks exactly like you. <laughs> but you're trying to bring your special 
persona to the reading. That's the only way we get cast. So if we know who we are and we can figure out what is going on in the scene and we are off book and we're ready, nerves are going to be there. I'm not saying you're not going to be nervous. But the stakes in the scene take the nerves out because if you're nervous, the character's nervous. If you need something in the scene, the character needs something in the scene and then it comes alive. In auditions, I get my sides mm-hmm. to to uh, to read, mm-hmm. and today and now what we have different that we didn't have before is self taping. Right. So if I get my sides and I'm gonna set myself up to self tape, can I cheat and maybe have like three or four things that I bring into an uh, into a self tape like like a prop or something? Yeah, maybe a prop. Mm-hmm. I mean, self-taping, there's, a, you know, you can go for it with props and you can have, if you are not off book, which I suggest you are off book big time on self-tape. And off self-tape, book means Means that you have it memorized. It. Okay. But if you aren't off book, have the paper. If your camera is cutting off here, have the paper down here. So if you need to glance, you can glance. Or have something written here Tape that you can, side, yes. right, that you can look the biggest problem that people have with self-taping is they don't put the person reading with them right next to the camera. You never, ever, 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 ever look into the camera on a self-tape. But you look right next to the camera, which is where the person, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever it is, is reading with you so that your eye line works. And then you have behind you not all of this, you have a yellow wall or a, you know a, a, a blue wall, just something so it doesn't Neutral. take right doesn't take anything away from the self tape. And the great thing about self taping, as you know, you can do it a million times until you get it right. And when you send it, make sure you're not sending the stupid the one. wrong one. Right, you're sending <laughs> the right one. Right. Excellent. So, what advice do you give actors when they go off to rehearse that scene? You know, how many times should they rehearse? Mm -hmm. Um, What should they bring into the rehearsal just as far as technique? Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what, What is that process? Well, if it's a first rehearsal with another actor, let the actor live. Don't start dictating, you do this, I'll do this, you do this, I'll do this. See what's going on. It's all about chemistry when you're doing a scene with somebody. And then you got to figure out, okay, are we fulfilling what's going on in the scene? Is this working? And then it's a process of just going over it and going over it and going. I like to rehearse a lot when I was in scene class. And when, if, my, if you're ready, if you're prepared, then uh, you're open to critique, you're open to adjustments, you're open to somebody helping you. If you're at home working with someone and... Um, you know, find the places where you're having a problem. Specify, this is what we need to work on right here. Also, as Roy taught us with the doings, so you have props in a scene. And it's so much different than an audition because when you're doing a scene in scene class, you have your props and the props help you and you endow them with personal choices. And then I get on a set, a TV show or a movie, Right before, you know, an hour, two hours before I'm shooting, I go to the location where I'm shooting. I look at my props. I personalize my props. I make sure that it's not like the first time I'm using something when I'm supposed to be, have done it for 15 years. So you're um, using props to really help the scene. We'll go back to scene class. So in scene class, you're bringing in props that help you. You don't need to bring in abundance of props, but you do need props that you're going to use that might feed the scene. And and that are personal to you. Personal to you. You that, personalize that, them. That by you touching them and working uh, with them, absolutely. and that and, it, there's yeah. a connection. Roy used to say, have something in your pocket that nobody knows about, that you just touch and boom, all of a sudden something deep happens and nobody knows why, but it's because you personalize that and now you have a secret. Secrets are great. Having yes. a secret in the scene yes. is wonderful. And, and, and that also works in auditions, I find. Mm-hmm. Just one thing. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, because when you do go in to read or you go in for a callback or, or whatever, what I used to like to use was a, a little necklace that had like a cross. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you... So it meant something something, something that was on my body that I didn't bring in, but I had, or I would bring... Uh, uh, 
at that time they used to give you paper cups to get water. Right. So I would bring my water with me and then I would make something with that. Okay. You know, that that it's something not nothing major but just mm -hmm. one thing that allows us to see the character. Right. What I I think what Roy talked about, what I've been saying forever is whatever works for you. You know, there's no secret. Um, I like to say we're not plumbers. Plumber takes a pipe, a six inch pipe with an eight inch pipe. They put it together with a clamp and it works and the water goes through. Actors, it's all out in the cosmos. We never know what's gonna work. That's why we experiment, that's why we try things. That's why there's a lot of tape in the cameras and stuff because you, you know, you, you succeed, you fail, you succeed. But if you're not willing to fail, you're gonna be boring. So you got to really try to, to f shake it up. How do you work with an actor who's very challenging and, and, oh boy. and oh yeah. refuses to do what you've asked them Sometimes to do? Sometimes it's not a case of refusing, it's a case of not, know, not knowing how to get there. I'm working with a girl who's probably one of the prettiest women I've ever seen in my life, and every time she has to do something where things are bad or she has to reflect on so she can't get there and I keep talking to her about it, and she gets upset, not getting there, and I say, use that, use that, and then the second we start doing it again, she doesn't get there. And, you know, and it's cruel out there because there's a lot of pretty people. So, you know, you have to be able to get where you need to go. I'm not saying you need to be emotional, but you need to play the stakes of a scene and get to wherever it is. I'm not a big believer if it says cry, to cry, but I am a big believer in getting to that state where you could. People don't want to cry. People don't want to be emotional. Actors want to be emotional, the actors that can break through. But it's much more important to be able to access who you are and your personality, you know? Okay, so um, you just got an audition and you have to go in and read. Please, agents, hear me. <laughs> What is your process? I go over the material, meaning I read the script a lot before I start working on it. Ten times, five times? Yeah, well, it was five, six times to read the whole scene. And if it's two scenes, three scenes, read each one a lot. Then I start breaking it down. I write all over my material. I write choices. I write who I'm talking to. And uh, you notice that I'm not ever talking yet about memorizing, because it's not about memorizing yet. It's not about memorizing words. It's about choices and it's about text analysis. I'm figuring out what does my character want? How is my character going to get it? What's the obstacle stopping my character from getting it? How do I bring the best me trying to get what I want? And then I work on it and work on it and work on it. I'm, I'm working on it like crazy, because I don't want to go into that room not prepared. Mm -hmm. I want to go into that. I work a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've, I've done lots and lots of stuff. Why? Because I'm ready. And then if they want me, they want me. If they don't want me, you know, they're stupid. No. <laughs> if, they don't, if they don't want me, it's because they want a different flavor. Yes. But I can only give them my flavor. Yes. You know? Yes. And then, okay, so you, you auditioned. You now have booked the role. Mm -hmm. How do you now um, prepare for the job now you because you, you prepared for the audition now what do you do to prepare for the actual job well it depends if it's a sitcom there's a whole other rehearsal process so you know it's you're rehearsing on set and you're getting better and they're changing the material if it's a uh, that's if it's a three camera sitcom or four camera or tape if it's a drama or if it's a movie then they're shooting out of order so I'm always aware of where my character is in the process of, of the part. And then I'm getting ready just for the part that I'm shooting that day. So I'm really, really working and fine-tuning what I want in that day. And then the biggest advice I can give anybody is throw it away and play. You've done your work. Throw it away. Nobody's interested in seeing the actor's process. What they want to see is the, is the, the human condition. So if you have done your work, hopefully it's there. And so I'm always ready because I've done a lot of work on it. I like to get on a set and see where people are at, see where the leads of the show are at, see the collaboration between 
the director talking to the lead actors. I learned a long time ago, you know, that when you get on a set and you're doing a movie or a TV show, they give you little sides. And actors, a lot of the time, try to go, I don't need the sides, I have it memorized. And then they go into the scene to rehearse, and so you're working opposite William Hurt, you're working opposite uh, George C. Scott, you're working opposite uh, Tyne Daly, and all of a sudden the lines go out, and it's not about the lines at that moment, it's about figuring out the blocking, figuring out what's going on. There's plenty of time to do the other kind of work when you are absolutely rehearsing with the other actor, but at the beginning, it's about servicing what the DP needs, the, the, the director of photography, what the director has in mind in talking to you. I always ask questions to the director if I don't know what to do. If I do, I'm hoping that what I'm doing, they cast me. So they saw what I can do in the part. Now I have to come in with the confidence of knowing this is what I'm doing, and now I'm working opposite some wonderful, I've worked with great actors. And, you know, great actors, are, it's like playing tennis with somebody that's real good. It improves your game. So you just go in there and you do what you do. And you got to trust that what you do works. What I like to say to students is, what you do in scene class, what you do is exactly what happens in TV shows and movies. It's just the stakes are higher, the money is better, and the exposure is great. But acting is acting. So be open. You come onto a set, you figure out what the lay of the land is, and you see, who, you know, do you want to rehearse this again? Can we go over this? And then you take it from what's going on. Working on different sets, which is the set that you learned the most and what was it? Mm -hmm. um, it was probably with the fab. I don't know if you guys, if you're too young, you wouldn't know. There's an actor named George C. Scott, one of the great actors of all time. I was doing Exorcist Three, and the director was a very big director. I, uh, I think it was Erwin Kirshner. I'm not sure. He may have done the Robocop. I can't remember. Anyway, he was a big, big director. Uh, yeah, and uh, the scene was where I come in, I'm the head of the hospital, and George C. Scott is um, in the room, and in the room are jars filled with tissue and blood, and that's his best friend who's been killed and stuffed into these jars. And the lines are, sir, what are you doing here? He turns around and says, I'm a detective, this is my best friend, etc. So the director says, okay, George, you want to rehearse? And George says, no. And I'm not saying any of those lines. And I'm going, ah. And George says, I'm just going to, he'll come in, you know, Ken will come in and he'll say what he has to say. I'll turn around and look at him. And they said, okay, George, let's try it. So George C. Scott was known as a, he played Patton, the movie Patton, if you don't know who he is. You look him up, he's a fabulous actor. So get ready, I come into the room, I got my beautiful suit, I look very smart, I look like the head of the hospital. I come in and I say, sir, excuse me, what are you doing here? He turns around as if I'm disturbing him and taking him out of his caring and, and his whole sense of wonderment, not wonderment, but dealing with what happened to his friend. And he gives me this look and his eyes and his whole face was shaking and I had more lines and all I did was go. And I walked out, and that's the take that's in the movie. And it was incredible, and I learned, um, you know, sometimes less is a thousand percent more, and especially when you're working with experienced actors who really can know what's going on. One more. I did a TV show where I'm dealing with a serial killer, and I'm playing the psychiatrist. And um, he comes in, and it's an early in the piece, and he's coming in and... Uh, he had a disciplinary problem. So the guy comes in and I'm supposed to talk to him. And I started acting with him as if I knew that this guy was special. And the director came over and said, it's just one more of 70 people that you've seen today that are coming in to be reprimanded. I went, got it. And so I did the scene and it was fabulous. So some, you know, I mean, a lot of the times directors will give you that one thing, as I said before, that just keys you in and it's like, okay, it's routine. So then it was no big deal.
you know. Mm-hmm. So. You've booked a job, and you're scared to no end because you now found out that the lead actor is someone of high stature. Mm-hmm. Should I get coached? Is, is uh, there you you book the job you booked already? It. Yeah, and, you booked and it. get coached. Yes. For, Once you got the job. Well, I mean, if yeah, I mean, if you feel like you know you are not going to bring the best choices that you made in the room, and now all of a sudden you're intimidated, then perhaps you know getting coached will give you that little edge that you need that will help you on the set, so that you don't, so you feel you belong. The problem with guest stars or coming in and doing a part in a movie or a TV show is it is weird. You can't deny that it's, you know, they've been there a long time. They've been in through the run of the movie or they've been on the show forever. Now you're coming in as a guest star. Acknowledge the fact that it's weird. Don't kind of beat yourself up for it. Did you see Once Upon a Time in, in Hollywood? No, not yet. Oh, uh, it was a great scene. I don't want to give anything away. But um, just go in and um, try to do your best. And again, as I said, acting is acting. So if you can get coached to make you feel more comfortable and ground yourself, then do that. I also believe the sides, write on the new sides that you have. And then in between takes, look at it to remind yourself, maybe there's something I'm not doing. And then go in and do what you need to do. Why should an actor get coached? Because it always helps to have somebody... I mean, anybody that's coaching you usually has more wisdom than you in terms of or longevity and understand better. Also, you know, it, it, it's great to have a, a, another eye on what you're doing and to make sure that you, you know, sometimes people come to me for coaching and they're really prepared. I go, don't touch a thing. It was fabulous. And it's just, you know, sometimes people don't have somebody they can play off of. Mm-hmm. So, but if in coaching, a lot of the times we coaches will say you know that choice isn't bringing the best out of you or you're not making a choice here or as I've seen with script analysis this is the place where you get the job or not and this is what you have to hit and this is where you have to be fabulous Mm -hmm. you know what do you love about acting the unpredictability of every day um, with material and how every day you have to face the bullet. Meaning you're going in and if you're working, I'm working on Monday on a TV show. I'm feeling the same way I felt 20 years, you know, anybody that denies that it's not crazy making is, it's not true. But you go in and it's like adrenaline and it's fabulous and you're doing what you love, which is breaking down a script, which is going in, which is working with other people and, um, just bringing me into the moments and uh, just enjoying breaking it down and doing it. So you have, you have a son and a daughter and they're both acting Mm -hmm. and your son is all over the place. He is hitting it big time. Yeah. He's um, a series regular on the Goldbergs and uh, he was in a movie called Project Almanac. He was in a movie called Truth or Dare. He was in, um, Monster House, he played Chowder when he was nine years old, which was motion capture. My daughter was on The Middle and was on some other TV shows, and she studies uh, with a great acting teacher named Michael Wilson, and she is trying, she's out there auditioning and getting better and better, and it's a family thing. My brother is an Academy Award nominee for Barton Fink. Michael so, Lerner. Michael Lerner, so it's in the family. And um, it's family business. When they started acting, did you coach them? Did you? Absolutely. He owes me a lot of money. I didn't charge him anything. <laughs> Sam Lerner, pay up. Uh, now I'm going to ask you a non-acting question, but a very business mm-hmm. question. How do you deal with your agents? I try to call my agents with something very positive to ask them about a project, something that I think I should get into, but mostly it's about, I heard that this is happening, I would love to get an idea, I know this person, so I'm not calling just saying, hey, how come you're not working for me? 
I'm calling with a very specific idea in mind. Because because if you call them and say, you know, you know, you're not working for me. I mean, you know, people are people. I mean, I mean, I don't. I mean, agents are people. Um, they don't want to hear negativity. You know, so if you can call with something positive about, I know this producer, I know this director, I know this actor, and I think I'm right for this show, is you know, that's the way to get in touch with an agent. And don't bug them. Don't bug them because they have a lot of, you know, they have 75, 80 of you who want jobs. Everybody wants jobs. Everybody wants to work. So be specific when you call your agent. What would you tell your younger self about the business Calm Today. down. Stop trying to get everybody to see how fabulous you are. Do the work. Go in and don't try to impress like crazy. I mean, I think the younger me tried to force myself into situations rather than allow myself to be. And I didn't trust the confidence that I have now. You know that old expression, if you only knew now what you do, you know, when you were younger. Um, so it's uh, leave yourself alone, you know. You're great. You're you. That's what you're selling. So, you know, the young Ken needed to smarten up and calm down. That would be the best advice. What takeaway did you get from uh, Peggy Fury that you have in your toolbox as an actor today? Um, humanity. Peggy was really one of those people that... Um, wanted you to, uh, she insisted on playing off the other person and really seeing where the other person was coming from and trying to bring out the, the best in you. And she was such a, she was very inventive and very and loved actors, you know. I think all the best acting teachers love actors. Roy loved actors. Peggy loved actors, and that's what I took. Stella Adler had problems with. I don't yes, know whether you did, I did or not. Too. But yeah. I loved her. Yeah, I loved her. So what did you take away from her as an actor? What her was? ego. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, the big, best thing I took away from Stella is the, the sense of the tradition of the theater and the sense of the theater is bigger than all of us and stop trying to own it. You know, we're all a part of something and there's a real respect. I mean, Uta Hagen wrote that great book, Respect for Acting. Uh, Stella Adler. Lived it. That lived it. Yeah, she exactly. lived it and taught yeah. it. Yeah, that's and, who she was. Uh, and her ego always came in before her. Unbelievable. Uh, but what, what I will say that I took away from Stella was the writing, that yeah. she was very big on the research yeah. and the writing, yeah. that you couldn't advance past step two if you did not do the research on the period mm -hmm. uh who the writer of the piece mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. what the piece was about what what it was intended i i just finished listening to uh watching roy's documentary well, I haven't and seen it in a long time. I, yeah I, I pulled it out i was being a little nostalgic mm -hmm. so i just had to watch yeah. roy and and uh one of the things he said that I was reminded of, he said, act what the writer intended. Right. Because sometimes you don't get those great pieces of writing. Right. And instead of negating the writing or, you know, talking about how crappy it is, to raise it up. Absolutely, raise it up. Um, going back to Stella, the big thing with Stella was... She didn't want you to use your personal life. She wanted you to use your imagination. So Stella was very big on writing backstories. And the problem with actors is that it's very hard to write notebook after notebook after notebook rather than just use your whole life. So as young actors, I suggest you take from this teacher, you take from this teacher, you take from this teacher. So Stella had some great things to offer, but the work ethic, I think she's going back to the 30s and 40s. And the work ethic in the 80s and 90s wasn't the same. So it was very hard to keep up and do what Stella wanted. But she was brilliant. And she had that special class. I don't know if you remember. She had a class that all the big stars in town would come to. And she would work on one script. When I was there, it was Men in White by Sidney Kingsley. And um, it was all about doing five, you do five sentences in three hours. 
and talked about each word. Why did the writer write this word? And everybody was mesmerized by what she was doing. And it was all about the writing. Yeah. Yes, she she was a, a beast in that in, in that realm. Yeah. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, first of all, loved my family, and uh, that I gave I added something to the acting community uh, and nurtured the people around me and raise them up and you do that oh thank you thank you so much for joining us i love you ken my pleasure one of my favorite people i'm so excited